Hello and welcome to the Getting Started with Specflow video series. My name is Bas Dijkstra. In this third video in the series, we're going to take a look at how you can write more expressive steps using the powers of Specflow. In the previous video in this series, we've seen how you can use Specflow to auto-generate step definitions for the feature files and scenarios that you want to create executable specifications for. But once you've generated those step definitions, how does Specflow know exactly which code to execute when it encounters a specific step? Specflow does this by means of step definition matching. And there are three different strategies that you can use to match your step definitions to your steps. The first one, and that's by far the most often used method, is by using regular expressions. And this is also the step definition matching method that you'll see in this video. The other two step definition matching techniques that you can use with Specflow is either by using method names with Pascal casing, which means that every word in a sentence or step is capitalized. And the third step definition matching technique also uses method names, but in this case it uses snake casing, which means that all words in a step are written in lowercase and the words are separated by underscores. When you use Specflow to auto-generate step definitions for the steps that have no code associated with them yet, in the window where you select for which steps you want to generate step definitions, you can also select one of the three step definition matching strategies that I just mentioned. As I said, in this video we're going to use regular expressions because that's by far the most powerful and versatile way of step definition matching that Specflow has to offer. Here again we have a feature file with two scenarios for our zip code REST API and I've already generated step definitions for the steps in these scenarios using the technique that you've seen in the previous video. Now if we take a closer look at the code that Specflow generated for us, you can see that every step definition method has a regular expression associated with it. So for example, the step given the country code US and zip code 90210 has a regular expression associated with it that looks like this. This is the most basic form of a regular expression. It's just a regular string. And this means that Specflow will execute the associated method only when the step in the scenario exactly matches this string. So whenever Specflow encounters this step in one of the scenarios that express the intended behavior of the API that we're testing here, Specflow will go through your code base and see if there is a step definition method with a regular expression that matches this step. And in this case, we have an exact match with this method here. Now, because we only have regular expressions here that are exact matches for the steps in our feature files, and in our scenarios, we could potentially end up with a lot of different step definitions. For example, in the first scenario, I have a country code US and a zip code 90210. But in the second scenario, I use that same country code US, but with a different zip code. If we would only use exact matches in our regular expressions, we would potentially need a lot of different step definitions. One for the zip code 90210, and one for the zip code with five twos. Once our collection of scenarios and feature files grows, we could potentially end up with a lot of different step definitions and step definition files, and as a result with a lot of code duplication, and that's something that we want to avoid. Let's see how we can perform some more intelligent step definition matching by using the power of regular expressions. The first example that I want to discuss here is the parameterization of steps. In the example that I just showed you, it's very likely that I want to execute the exact same code no matter whether the value of the zip code is 90210 or 5 times 2. The only thing I need to do is define the actual zip code that's going to be used as a parameter instead of having to duplicate my step definitions. So parameterizing steps improves reusability because I can use the same step definition method no matter what the actual value of the zip code is. It prevents step definition explosion because instead of two separate step definition methods, I can reuse a single one. And as we will see later on in this video, we can apply some other useful tricks that, re that regular expressions provide us to make this parameterization even more powerful. So 
let's say we want to make the zip code a parameter instead of a fixed value in our regular expression. We can do this by removing the hard-coded 90210 value and replacing it with a dot star between brackets in our regular expression. The brackets in the regular expression indicate a capture group and the dot star regular expression matches all characters repeated zero or more times. In order to be able to use the value that specflow captured using this regular expression capture group, we need to assign it to a parameter that we pass to our step definition. So in this example, that is going to be a string called zip code. And if you were writing the actual implementation of a step definition, you would be able to use the value that's assigned to the parameter zip code in the implementation of your test here. And because I've now created a step definition with a parameter, I can safely remove the second step definition because the first one both matches the step with zip code 90210 as well as the step with zip code 5 times 2 And if we look at our feature file, we can also see that we successfully applied the parameterization because now the values 90210 and 5 times 2 are italicized and written in gray instead of white, which is SpecFlow or rather the Visual Studio extension for SpecFlow's way of telling us this value is a parameterized value in our step. Let's see what else we can do using the power of regular expressions in our step definition matching. The first example that I want to show you is the use of integer only parameter values. The examples that I've used in the scenarios here only have numerical zip codes because in the United States zip codes are numerical. If I want to enforce the use of numerical only zip code values in my steps, in my feature files, I need a stricter regular expression than one that captures pretty much any sequence of characters of any length. Let's see how we can do that with a regular expression. So here's our step definition again with the dot star in the regular expression. If you want to match only integer values, we need to replace the dot star with forward slash d star. Forward slash d means match only digits and the star again means repeated zero or more times. Since matching empty zip codes probably isn't very useful for us, let's replace the star with the plus operator and where the star means repeated zero more times the plus means repeated one or more times which means that zero d plus will match all integer expressions with a length of at least one and we can now also safely change the data type of the parameter in our step definition method from string to int because the forward slash d plus will only match integer values. And this might save you some type checking or type conversion in the implementation of your step definition. If we go back to our feature file, we can see that the values of 90210 and 5 times 2 are still accepted values for this step definition. But if I change the zip code value to banana, the step will turn purple, meaning that there's no suitable step definition found for this step. Or in other words, this step is not matched by any regular expression in our step definition file. And this is exactly what we wanted to achieve with this regular expression. The next trick that I want to show you that shows the power of regular expressions when you're using SpecFlow is defining optional characters in your regular expressions. And this is especially useful if you're working with both singular as well as plural forms of certain words in your specifications. So for example, if we look at the when, it says when I request the locations corresponding to these codes. This implicates that there are multiple locations associated with the country and zip code that are specified in a given step. For some countries this is the case, so a 
zip code can match to multiple locations but in other situations there's just one location that's uniquely defined by the zip code which means that in my when step i might want to say both i request the locations as well as when i request the location and again without having to define two separate step definitions for each one of these situations an easy way to do this in regular expressions in specflow is by defining optional characters. In this case the S in locations is optional but because we want to match both location as well as locations. And if I want to make the S an optional character I can simply do that by adding a question mark after the S. A question mark in a regular expression makes the character or if you use brackets a character group right before that question mark optional. So if we now go back to our scenarios, I can use both when I request the locations as well as when I request the location in my scenarios, which again brings me closer to being able to use natural language in my feature file. Because as you can see, both the when step in the first scenario as well as the when step in the second scenario, one uses location, the other uses locations. Both are matched by the same step definition file because I marked the S in locations as optional. The final example of the power of regular expressions that I want to show you is the ability to define lists of allowed options. Say for example, I want to only allow the use of very specific country codes in my scenarios and in my executable specifications. So instead of accepting just any two character country code I want, for example I only want to accept the country codes that are associated with the United States and with Canada again this is something that we can easily do in regular expressions by defining a list of allowed values separated by the pipe character and enclosing it in brackets so this regular expression only accepts US and CA for the country codes. And because we defined another capture group in our regular expression, we should also pass it to the implementation of our step definition method by means of a parameter. If we take another look at our feature file here, we can now see that the US value is also a parameterized value here. And since both US and CA are accepted values in our regular expression, I can change this to CA and this step will still be matched to the step definition method. But if we change the country code to an L for the Netherlands, for example, we get the feedback in Visual Studio that there's no matching step definition for the step that we defined here, which is exactly what we're looking for, but because we only accept US and CA for the country codes. Now there are many more very powerful things that you can do with regular expressions and spec flow, but the examples that I've given in this video are among some of the most used ones. In the next video, I'm going to show you some other features of spec flow that can help you tidy up your scenarios and feature files even more and by doing so improve the readability and maintainability of your collection of scenarios and feature files. Again, if you have any questions about or feedback on this video, please do not hesitate to get in touch. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon.